Dorcha Tierna to non later the Kurfoon, and Chendis during our Ganevera, or the Snarta Gross to the Bunneran, when he did her Kankrika. On a Skaruza Tusno for Arnid of Reher, I was Arnilaganea Fasta, as got three the Creek no freed, three Cree Star Dear Nene. Direct to beseech the Lord our actions by the holy inspirations, and carry them on by their grace assistance, that every word and work of ours may always again from thee and by thee be happily ended through Christ our Lord. Amen. I have received notice from the following Senators that they propose to raise the following matters. Senator John Kelly, the need for the Minister for Justice and Equality to have notifications of speeding fines sent by registered post to offenders. Senator Martin Conway, the need for the Minister for Justice and Equality to allow members of the Garda Reserve who have a minimum of two years service and who wish to become members of Angada Shikona to proceed to interview level as a matter of course. Senator John Crown, the need recognising the, the commitment of the government in pro to providing aid for developing countries. The Minister of State at the Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade with responsibility for trade and development to outline the government's commitment and imp implementation plan in respect of population planning in developing countries. I regard the matters raised by the Senators as suitable for discussion and the adjournment. They will be taken to the business. Well, the Leader. Uh, thank you, Cahirik. The order of business is items 1, 2 and 3 on the order of paper. Item 1. Private Members' Business, Criminal Law, Sexual Offences Bill 2014, uh, to be taken at um, 3.45 and conclude no later than 5.45. Item 2, State Airport, Shannon, Airport uh, Shannon Group Bill 2014, Committee Stage Resumed, uh, to be taken at 5.45 and to conclude no later than 7.15 p.m. Uh, and Item 3, the Companies Bill 2012, Second Stage, be taken at 7.15 and to be adjourned no later than 9.15 if not previously concluded, with the contribution of group spokespersons not to exceed 10 minutes, all other senators not to exceed 6 minutes. Senator Byrne. Yeah, thanks very much, uh, Cahirlach. And just in relation to the order um, and the company's bill, I think is the longest piece of legislation that ever has uh, been proposed by a government, a very important piece of legislation. And we certainly welcome that second stage is taking place today. Just in relation to committee stage leader, I'd be looking for an assurance um, that there won't be any guillotine or, or delay, or maybe that the leader would look at some way to, to actually regulate the, the, the debate in relation to committee stage. We certainly don't want to delay it at all, uh, but I think it is important that it is uh, dealt with line by line despite its size. And it may be possible to implement a suggestion that I made some time ago uh, that we would allocate a specific amount of time for every section if, if, if that's needed. Um, so it's to allow full debate but not to allow filibustering. But that's something that you can think about uh, because that will take a long time if we do our job properly as legislators, which we're here uh, to do. Uh, just in relation to um, mother and baby uh, homes, I have to say the Fianna Fáil party uh, welcomes uh, very much uh, the tone and the content uh, of Minister Flanagan's uh, statement on the radio at lunchtime today in relation to the government decision to set up a, a commission of inquiry uh, in relation to the mother and baby homes. Uh, we will certainly cooperate on a cross-party basis in relation to this. Uh, we don't believe uh, that it's a political issue. Uh, we believe that we should all work together uh, on it and will support every effort that the government makes uh, in respect of that. I know the Shannon will have a role to play in that because the commission investigation can only be set up uh, with the consent of each house. Uh, and I know that we will have a strong role, and I look forward to the Shannon debate in relation to that. But from us, you can expect nothing other than uh, utter cross-party cooperation in relation to that. We have a couple of uh, issues on it. One just leader, and it was mentioned by my colleague Robert Troy on the radio today. Uh, one is in relation to the privacy uh, of the women themselves who are involved in these institutions, and indeed of uh, children who survived uh, the institutions as well. Uh, that is obviously, hopefully, will be a key concern, because I know some of them have, have been talking to some colleagues, and they have concerns about that. We will also be looking for a helpline uh, to be established uh, for people who are in these institutions, uh, women and, and, and surviving uh, children. I think that would be useful. Uh, but we will give uh, our full cooperation in relation to that, both in the Dáil and indeed here, of course, uh, in the Shannon. Now, another issue uh, has arisen in the last couple of days in relation to the industrial wind turbines that are planned across the country uh, by a number of companies. A few weeks before the election, uh, Minister Pat Rabbit announced that the project to export wind energy uh, was cancelled and wouldn't be going ahead. In fact, he expressed his disappointment at that. What has happened, though, in the last week is that 
Uh, one of the companies involved in County Mead has lodged a pre-planning consultation uh, document with on board Pinala, uh, outlining that they propose to apply for planning permission for 50 uh, wind turbines in County Mead. Uh, I suspect that this will happen elsewhere. I think because of the political ramifications of this, because of the uh, international ramifications between Ireland and the United Kingdom, uh, and the secrecy of the negotiations that have been going on at all levels, whether commercial or, or indeed international, uh, I am calling and I am proposing an amendment to the order of business uh, that Minister Rabbit come into the channel uh, to explain uh, what is going on in relation to industrial wind turbines in this country. Uh, what is happening at the moment is a complete contradiction of what the Minister himself said uh, three or four weeks ago, and it is causing huge concern in County Mead, and I am sure will cause uh, huge concern uh, all around uh, the country as these applications go in. And it was the one thing that is really annoying citizens around the country is the secrecy of these deals. There are secret deals being done on the ground, there are secret arrangements between multinational companies, and there seems to be secret arrangements uh, between government. And even the import Panala process is completely secret at the moment as well, because all that's happened is uh, that Element Power have written to Import Panala, notifying them that the pre-planning consultation under the Strategic Infrastructure Act has commenced. So I'm proposing that the Minister come in today uh, to explain that, uh, and that be an amendment to the order of business. Come Senator Batchik. Uh, and, uh, like Senator Byrne, I would welcome Minister Flanagan's announcement and the government decision on the, uh, on, the, uh, on the need for an investigation into the mother and baby homes and the incidents of, uh, uh, of those and of abuses within them, of the women and, and indeed of the children, and, uh, and of course the uh, investigation into the manner of death and the high mortality rates in those homes. Uh, and it must be said that you know, there was a good deal of information already before different commissions on, um, uh, um, given that many of those children who ended up in industrial schools had themselves been born in mother and baby homes, and I just know as a, um, having in the past represented survivors of abuse in the industrial schools, just how often these institutions of, of confinement were uh, interlinked and how uh, there was in fact a network throughout Ireland for many decades of the 20th century to our shame, to the shame of all of us, um, this, this network of institutions in which women and children were confined mind over, uh, over many decades, as I say. Uh, the church and the church organisation certainly bear a large responsibility, but equally the state and society more generally. I think more and more we're seeing an acknowledgement of that, that many women ended up in mother and baby homes because their families would no longer accommodate them. And I think that's a sad uh, truth um, that also we should reflect on uh, um, as, we, as, we, uh, as we embark on a further investigation. But I very much welcome that. Uh, Could I also dear, look, um, just well, uh, congratulate Safe Ireland on the event which, which they organised today and another issue which again should bring uh, shame on Irish society which is the incidence of domestic violence and domestic abuse in Ireland. Safe Ireland organised an event today in Temple Bar which I was uh, glad to attend and I know I was accompanied by quite a number of other women colleagues from both houses. Uh, this was the event entitled On Just One Day uh, in which Safe Ireland wished to highlight the incidence of domestic abuse in Ireland uh, through providing a window, a sort of visual representation of an ordinary day in Ireland, 5th November 2013, on which 460 67 women and 229 children were accommodated or received support from a Safe Ireland domestic violence service. And of course, Safe Ireland, being the national organisation representing frontline domestic um, service, uh, domestic violence services, are well placed to, to illustrate to us just how extensive the incidence of domestic violence is and how much we need to ensure uh, stronger legislative and uh, and uh, legal responses to it. And I would ask the leader that we might have a debate. I know we've had a number of debates on domestic violence, but that we'll have a debate in early course on the Justice Committee report. We've, we've are in the process of producing a report on domestic violence resulting from a series of hearings we've held. We've heard very strong testimony about the need for various legal changes. And I think uh, it would be good to have the debate in the Shannon. I know the minister is going to be bringing forward legislation, I hope later this year on this, on this issue. And I also hope that we'll see a move towards ratification of the Istanbul Convention. But there's a number of very specific legal issues issues um, around ratification of the convention, notably around the property rights of perpetrators or alleged perpetrators. So I think we, we could have a good debate on that leader in this House. Uh, I'd also uh, like to welcome uh, the announcement of the uh, Commission of Inquiry uh, into uh, the story of the mother and baby homes uh, across the country. Um, I have been very impressed uh, by the commentary of, of some figures in this debate, and I would 
I single out uh, the local historian uh, Catherine Corliss in particular, I think, for her great work, but also for the reasonableness with, with which she has gone uh, addressing uh, the issues that have been uh, under debate. I don't think we have been so well served, unfortunately, by the media, whose coverage on this issue has been mixed uh, and with the quality of its coverage has been patchy, to say the least. We're not well served by international media perhaps uh, assisted uh, by ideological elements in the media in Ireland who want to, per to promote and perpetuate a particular narrative of Ireland. Uh, the truth is what sh should matter and the truth will be very painful uh, for our society to look at and of course in all that we do we mustn't lose sight uh, of the lack of respect uh, for children and the lives of children in our country and abroad as it goes on at present. So let not the truth-telling that is so important in relation to these homes uh, distract us or allow us to be hypocritical in respect of our failure to, uh, to care uh, for people properly in our society uh, today. And I would make one particular point on this as well. We have not been well served by politicians who have engaged in a degree of profile building on the back of this issue. Uh, it was too early to be using words like manslaughter or genocide, whether in this house or the next. And I think we all have to be extremely careful not to instrumentalise uh, the very tragic stories involved simply to get a t short term uh, coverage, which of course is the, uh, a legitimate aim for politicians to be trying to get attention in the media, but not on the back of these unfortunate people, please. Um, I would like to ask for the Minister uh, for Environment to come to the House and to discuss the issue of the operation of the Building Control Regulations uh, Leader. I have heard uh, from one friend of mine in East Galway who finds himself facing uh, several thousand euros, up to 10,000 euros in extra cost because of the operation of these uh, building regulations. He says indeed the price, the money that he had put aside uh, to put the windows and doors into the new home that he plans to build on his own land will be swallowed up by this and he doesn't know whether he can proceed. Uh, with the project. Uh, it seems to me that these regulations make a lot of sense in the con context of Priory Hall type developments where uh, uh, large contractors engaged in uh, shoddy practices and use shoddy materials. And I'm very much in favour of ensuring high standards. Uh, but I, I note that there is a, a, an online petition by people, uh, small people, if you like, who want to build, uh, who are concerned at the operation of these regulations, at the cost that it's going to impose on them, and particularly where it has happened that money has already been spent on the planning uh, processes that they have engaged in so far. So I would like the minister himself, a countryman, to come to the House uh, to debate this uh, further with us. Finally, could I welcome the news today? Uh, 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 of the proposed publication of legislation on lobbying. This is uh, long awaited, um, but what will be important is what this legislation contains. It will be important, for example, that there would be a required cooling off period uh, from the time that government employees seize work before they begin employment as lobbyists. And we will also have to look carefully at the definition of lobbying intent. Uh, distinctions conclude. between, I will conclude, uh, and thank you for your indulgence, distinctions between official and private contact between lobbyists and public officials, it seems to me would not be appropriate. So I look forward to seeing what this legislation contains. I also wish to very much welcome the announcement by the Minister for Children and Youth Affairs, Deputy Flanagan, that there is to be a statutory commission of investigation into the matters raised relating to the mother and baby home in and other institutions and to be fair it's less than two weeks since I raised this matter in this house for the first time until today's announcement and there was no delay here and the government are taking this matter extremely seriously. Given the ongoing and correct public interest and the wider uh, issues regarding seemingly vastly higher rates of infant mortality in such homes as compared with the wider population at the time, I am asking the leader to arrange a debate on the matter in this house this week and to invite Minister Flanagan to attend. Um, if I might suggest that in the absence of concrete facts in relation to Tume, though there is ample material to uh, warrant an inquiry, that the debate concentrate on the available wide-ranging and comprehensive research on such institutions in general, including medical trials, forced, the alleged forced adoption that has been carried out in such institutions. And I'm sure that such a debate will assist the Minister when the terms of reference of the inquiry are being drawn up. It frustrates me greatly that we as a society only get to grips 
with our terrible social history when something comes to light that galvanizes the international media and it is time we discuss these matters in a very calm manner and in doing so leave our prejudices political and otherwise outside the door so i'd ask the leader to invite the minister for children to this house to discuss it. Uh, first of all i'd like to second the proposed amendment to the order of business by my colleague Senator Byrne and I'm rising primarily to, to call uh, again not for the first time on the leader to um, have a debate in this house with regard to job creation sustainable jobs in rural Ireland and to ask that the minister responsible Mr. Minister Richard Bruton would come in to this house and outline to us clearly what are his plans for places like your own county Watford uh, places like West Cork and North Cork places like Kerry and Donegal, regions that have been badly affected by immigration, outward immigration, uh, more intense than anywhere else in Ireland. Uh, we, all, we, we hear quite often of the job announcements for Dublin and for Galway and for Cork City, but there's huge tranches of rural Ireland, and I'm only touching on it, that we need to have some focus and some plan. And I, I would sincerely ask that the Minister would come in before this House to have a fulsome debate on what his plans are for the creation, uh, I'm not talking about millions of jobs, of some jobs at least for these parts of rural Ireland that are sustainable and that will last uh, rather than the, the normal CE schemes and so on that most people fall into that category. I think it's, it's critically important that that debate would, would, would uh, take place if at all possible over the next four or five weeks leader. And, and finally, and I'll conclude in this uh, in ongoing a little hobby horse of mine that maybe before the summer recess um, uh, leader we would get Minister Coburn to come in and, and have, have a debate on the fishing industry. Uh, it's long promised. Uh, I know he, he was in here some weeks ago on, on the CAP reform, but I've been looking for a, 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 a debate on the fishing industry, where we're going in the fishing industry, and, and of course the, the severe appalling weather we had over last winter, where a lot of fishermen uh, were, were left idle. They weren't able to fish. Some of them lost their gear. And unfortunately, most fishermen uh, are uh, self-employed people, and when they're off for uh, six, eight, ten, and sometimes 12 weeks, they're unable to sign on and get any few bob uh, for, for, for their trouble. So that debate is long overdue, and I'd hope, uh, Leader, that you could uh, respond favourably to those two requests. Good morning. Senator Hayden. There, look. <clears throat> First of all, could I uh, congratulate our colleague, uh, Senator Zappone, on uh, the bill which we will be having at second stage this afternoon, the Criminal Law Sexual Offences Amendment Bill 2014. I was happy to be at the launch of um, this particular piece of legislation earlier on in the Marion uh, Hotel. And I was very struck by the document that Senator Zappone produced uh, to accompany um, the, the bill. Uh, summarising in everyday language what the bill contained. And I have to say, I, I was quite shocked because I, I, this has only recently come to my attention. Issues that can be raised during the debate. Yep. On, on the, uh, uh, the point I, I was about to make was that it was, it was very interesting to see how law, can, or how law that would come before this House can so easily be uh, translated into everyday language. But I suppose the point I want to make, Cahirlach, is that it is striking to say that somebody with an intellectual disability in this country does not have the same right to have an, a relationship uh, as somebody without intellectual disability. And it is, it, is, it is wonderful to see this piece of legislation before the House, but also to realise that fundamental issues of equality in our society still have to be dealt with. Um, on, on that point, in relation to the report which uh, Senator Batrick mentioned, uh, produced by Save Ireland, <coughs> which indicated that nearly 700 people, including women and children, uh, were homeless or were at imminent risk of homelessness in Ireland on one day, November the 5th uh, of last year. Um, it was more shocking to realise that 70% uh, of cases of um, physical uh, and, 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 uh, and, and verbal violence against women and children are not in fact reported. And it's been my experience that one of the main issues why women remain in unsafe situations uh, and, and, and sometimes virtual prisoners in their homes is because they they find it very difficult to access suitable housing supports and in many cases that's because they happen to be joint owners of a home uh, and in many cases those homes are actually in mortgage arrears uh, and are, are, are subject to repossession hearings. So I would uh, support the call for a further debate. I know we've had a debate in the past on the issue of domestic violence but I think there's more to be said on this subject and there's certainly more that can be done on this subject and I would ask uh, the, um, the leader to have a debate on this issue. 
Uh, Kurt, could I raise concerns about the recommendation for the Commission for Energy Regulation published last Friday that in the next accounting period the public service obligation charge on electricity should be increased by 55% uh, from uh, 210 uh, uh, million to 328 million uh, uh, and this would result in a 47% increase in the levy on domestic consumers, a 66% increase for small commercial consumers and an 81% increase for medium and large commercial uh, consumers. And I find the rationale for these horrendous increases at the time we're trying to increase the productivity of the Irish economy, the, the rationale is, is, is bizarre to say the least. One is to compensate, quoting from the report, for lower wholesale prices. So when the price of electricity goes down, the subsidy goes up. It's meant to be good for a country if the electricity prices fall. Two, the lower running of a gas uh, station in Tina in County Galway that uh, because its costs are fixed, when you use it less, the subsidy has to go up. And three, I know that something that interests our colleagues opposite, uh, a very large subsidy for wind generation, uh, which is to increase to 84 million. And the senators opposite, particularly the Labour Party, have raised this issue about wind power, and Senator Byrne has raised it as well. Can we please have transparency? Try to have an argument with a man who has 84 million of public subsidies in his back pocket promoting wind energy as a cheap form of electricity. It doesn't really uh, add up. I would hope that we can have a discussion on this report. What are these PSO costs for? They seem to be subsidising the high cost production of electricity. They're levied on the consumers. What's the rationale for the payments? Uh, the 4th of July deadline um, uh, is one that senators may wish to respond to. And given the way they've set the price of electricity, I would have concern that the same energy regulator is now in charge of regulating water. Goodness knows what they'll do to the price of water if we allow them away with what they proposed from last Friday. Gormaga. Mr Conway. Gormaga, to go here, look. Um, the HICWA report into the accident and emergency uh, unit at uh, the University of Limerick uh, Hospital was shocking, to say the least. Um, it stated that the unit was not fit for purpose. And, you know, it was so bad that the chief executive of the hospital groups was on local radio yesterday where she felt it necessary to apologise to the people of Clare and Limerick for the extraordinarily long delays and the serious distress, discomfort and hardship caused to them as a result. While I agree and accept and um, am very happy that there is a new state-of-the-art facility being built. The reality is that we will not have that until at least uh, the end of 2016 and possibly 2017 at the earliest. Uh, it's a serious situation and it needs immediate action uh, by the Minister for Health and by the HSE. Uh, there is uh, an accident and emergency unit, albeit uh, a, a smaller version, that operates from 8 o'clock in the morning until 8 o'clock at night, both in Limerick, or in uh, both in Ennis and in Nina. It has been suggested that as um, a reaction to this appalling crisis, that the accident and emergency unit that is in Ennis and in Nina should now be opened 24 hours a day until such time as this unit is open. Uh, reconfiguration, the principle of it, is fine. But it's totally unworkable and the reality is that unless the facilities were available and in place, reconfiguration should not have happened. So I would like the leader, if he could, uh, to communicate to the Minister for Health that I would like him to consider the option of opening the a &E unit in Ennis and in Nina as a reaction to this crisis. Uh, already members of Clare County Council have unanimously called for this. It may not be practical. Uh, it may not be possible, uh, but I do believe that it needs to be uh, examined as an urgent uh, uh, response to this particular crisis. I, I do welcome the announcement today by the government that there will be a full inquiry uh, into the, the uh, cases in Chung and in other places. And I support uh, the uh, uh, 
motion that has been suggested by Senator Nafton that we do have a debate this week uh, on, the, on this issue, uh, and I'll explain why I think it is pertinent that we do that. I, I note that in the Dáil, uh, my colleagues in Sinn Féin have put forward a private members' bill, which I still think is very important to debate, but I think we should be uh, given the opportunity to have a debate in this House as well. And I think it should cover all of the issues around... Uh, uh, the, the, the recent news. I mean, we also need to look at why, why it's only now that uh, this is coming to light and it's being acted upon, but all the issues around infant mortality, some of the stories of, of forced adoption, the governance issues, uh, who knew what and when, etc., uh, and the conditions that people were, were kept in. But I think the debate should probably look at what the terms of reference need to be. Uh, for, the, for this Commission, and I think we should have an input, and the, those terms of references should be agreed by the Houses of the Arafters here, and I would support the call by Senator Nafton to have that debate in the Shannon. I think we have a very positive input here. Just on another uh, small point, Minister, I, I raised uh, last week about the Minister for Health that the Ombudsman had noted that when he's had a lot of uh, complaints about the medical card, discretionary medical card issue, perhaps the leader might be able to clarify with the Minister for Health for this House why the Ombudsman has not been able to obtain the records for those discretionary medical cards. It would appear from what the Ombudsman said that when the, central, when the system was centralised, the files that went with those uh, cases were not centralised. So in the centralisation process, there seems to have been something has gone awry. Uh, he said he cannot, can't adjudicate on cases if he doesn't have the original case files, which gave the discretionary medical cards. Uh, and I think it's a very, very important issue. Uh, this government uh, trumpeted the centralisation of the medical cards, which we've seen has turned into... Uh, a fiasco in a lot of cases, uh, but I think the fact that the original case files have gone missing or are not available uh, to the Ombudsman when he's looking for them is certainly not acceptable, and perhaps the Minister could try and, or the Leader could try and find out from the Minister why this is the case. Mr Mullins. Uh, I too want to join with colleagues in welcoming the decision to so promptly uh, set up the full statutory inquiry into the uh, mother and baby homes. I certainly agree with Minister uh, Flanagan that is, this is a time for great sensitivity rather than sensationalism. And I think the behaviour of some elements of the media I think were absolutely despicable in the reporting uh, of um, the uh, appalling tragedies that have occurred. I hope that the inquiry presents okay, the full picture as to how women uh, and children were treated in our country not all that uh, many years ago. The inquiry as has been said, will be particularly painful. It'll be painful for a lot of, a, a, a lot of uh, people and organisations. It'll be painful for agencies and elements of the state, uh, for the church, and particularly for, for very many families. Thankfully, we now live in a more enlightened uh, time uh, when what happened in the early days of, 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 of the state uh, are hopefully never going to happen again. But I think there are a lot of people living today who are suffering still as a result of what's happened. So I think in order to, to give those people closure, we need this inquiry, we need it promptly, and hopefully people will be able to get on with the rest of their lives and live in, 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 in peace and with, with closure. And just on, on a very quick note, Kyra, like I just want to very much welcome the uh, announcement yesterday by the Minister of Education, the 6,100 uh, 6, new places on springboard courses uh, for the year 2014-2015 are going to be available and 171 uh, different courses in 38 colleges uh, are being offered uh, to, uh, to job seekers free of charge and they're being made available in the areas where there's uh, lots of job growth uh, right now. But what I would ask the leader to do is this is the fourth year of the, uh, of the springboard scheme that we might have the Minister or the Minister of State in uh, over the next number of weeks, just to, to review how the first three years of the scheme have gone and how many people have found gainful employment as a result, result of participation on the springboard courses. Thank Mike you. Sherry. Thanks very much, uh, I want to propose an amendment to the order of business that the Minister for Health will come to the House uh, and give us a briefing on uh, the medical card fiasco and the plans. We've heard much com positive commentary of recent weeks uh, in the context of the Taoiseach saying how this is going to be dealt with, um, uh, the, the postponing or ending of the reviews of discretionary medical cards uh, and the fact that there have been various news reports then where off the cuff various ministers have been saying that uh, all discretionary cards will be returned or that some will be returned or that most will be returned and in the meantime we have uh, I suppose in practice what would appear uh, to be a zombie minister in effect that seems to be 
uh, in line for a, the chop in the reshuffle. Uh, and this procrastination uh, in terms of what's really going to happen is continuing as we have the Labour posturing in terms of the leadership battle that's going on there, uh, where the one-upmanship between uh, deputy, uh, the two deputies, uh, the two ministers indeed, uh, is what the priority is in terms of winning votes rather than looking after people on the ground. So while all of this positive rhetoric uh, has been welcomed, uh, and I welcome it myself, it needs to be followed up in some way with some tangible action, and it hasn't been to date. I saw an ad in the paper asking what the people think about the issue in terms of should discretionary cards be returned, uh, but I haven't seen anything else. What I have seen, on the other hand, is this morning uh, a transplant patient with a lung transplant. Uh, their uh, discretionary card was taken off them today. Uh, another who came to a clinic yesterday uh, had inquired uh, that as they were under review and had a discretionary card, uh, was that review now halted? And they were told, no, that's not the case. Uh, uh, when they asked, well, I heard on the radio uh, that this is in fact the case, they were told, yes, it is the case for some people. So as with the position uh, here to four and before all the positive rhetoric from the Taoiseach and others uh, and the electoral hustings of the future leaders of the Labour Party, uh, the reality on the ground is that animal farm equality continues. Uh, and we still have all people being equal, but some are more equal than others. And surely the very existence of a discretionary card uh, in the first instance it would point at the fact that if somebody just had a lung transplant, you know, surely they're high on the list of likely candidates for a discretional card. So I think whether the government want to continue with a zombie minister or whoever wins the forthcoming Labour Party leadership battle, the people don't frankly care. What they are concerned so with... Over time. Yes, I'm just concluding now. What they are concerned with is what is happening. What are the tangible facts surrounding discretional medical cards? Is the review ongoing, as it would appear to be for the person who came but to my clinic? Are transplant Senator patients Burke. going to continue to lose doors? Or what are the plans for this government? Thank you. Senator Burke. Thank you, uh, Cahir. Look, um, I, I support um, Senator Nocton's call for a debate in the House with the Minister, um, Minister Flanagan coming into the House uh, on this very important issue. I think it's important as well that we realise of where we, we've come from and how attitudes have changed. But what was accepted not so long ago, for instance, it's less than 30 years ago that the status of illegitimacy was abolished under Irish law. And I was involved in the campaign which started off uh, to have the law changed. And we at the time set out that it would take us up to 10 years to get the law changed. In fact, from the date we launched that campaign, it took seven years, and that was the thank you at the time. And I remember quite distinctly the opposition to having the law changed in relation to children who were born outside of marriage. They did not have the same rights as children born within marriage. So let's not forget of where we've come from and the attitudes that were there at the time. And I think I would certainly welcome a debate in this House uh, on that whole issue that has now come into the public domain. Could I raise a, an important issue, and it's not the first time I've raised it, and that's about the recruitment of junior doctors and the little progress that has been made to date on that matter over the last three years. We're now facing in to a changeover again uh, within the next month, where many junior doctors will be um, going abroad because we have not put in place a comprehensive structure to retain them here in this country. And there's also a major question about how taxpayers in this country are paying out 90 million per annum for medical education and a huge portion of that is disappearing, that investment disappearing out of the country within 12 months of people graduating from college. I think we need to have a debate in this House on this issue with the Minister for Health and with all of the, the, the Minister for Education as well as regards how we deal with this issue. 90 million investment, over 60% gone within 12 months um, of that money being spent. And I think it's time we had a serious debate on it as regards restructuring how we employ junior doctors, the training we're offering to them, and their future prospects of remaining in this country. Because I think it's a sad situation that in an area where there are jobs, 
Irish graduates are not finding them attractive to stay here in this country, and I think it's, it's time we had a full and open debate on the matter. Senator Quinn. Thank you, Chair. Look, may I support Senator Mullins' call for a debate on, on uh, Springboard? I was actually attended yesterday at the launch of Springboard. It's something I've been involved in for a little while. It is a great success, wonderful story. It's, it's aimed at those people who have degrees, but the degrees that they're not able to use at the moment. Usually they're <clears throat> somebody con connected with the construction industry. They could be architects, could be engineers, could be uh, quantity surveyors. And what Springboard does is takes them along and arranges for them to do a course or, or of a couple, one year, two years, in order to give them um, a high degree in something where there is a job going. It's been a huge success, and to hear some of the stories yesterday is, is worthwhile hearing. I think it'd be worthwhile us to hear it as well. Now, I take one other point, um, and that is the, the question in the north of Ireland, they have been vaccinating against shingles for the last year. Now, we can do that now. Uh, but we're not doing it and I gather while we're starting an information campaign this is something that generally applies to older people uh, but it is a huge um, effort is needed on this area a number of, of, of a number of places in the continent have been able to do this but they have now developed this vaccination which is worthwhile if they're able to do it up north and they'll be doing it for a year it's only for people I think who are over 70 or maybe over 60 but if those if they're able to do that and if the number of people which at the moment I gather something like half the population over 80 will actually get it, but we now have a vaccination that will enable us to overcome it. I think it's worthwhile um, drawing attention to the Minister that if that's something that we can do, then we should be doing it as well. And my last point, there's a lovely little shop on Lincoln Place called Sweeney's, S-W-E-N-Y-S, -E -E not Sweeney in the traditional way. It's mentioned in James Joyce's Bloomsday. Leopold Bloom visited it at 11 o'clock that morning on Bloomsday, 110 years ago next Tuesday. But the, the reason I bring it up is it was a pharmacy, and they tell the story there, but the pharmacy closed in 2009 or was taken over by, by a group of volunteers who meet there to, to study Joyce it is, and, and, and to talk it and to read. It is just a glorious story, and I believe that they, the fact that they pay the rent, they pay the heat, they do everything else, but they're now, even though they're a charity, they're having to pay rates. I don't know whether an exception can be made for them, but if nothing else, we should all at least drop in and support them at some time in the next little while. Darcy? I too would like very much to welcome the, uh, the, uh, the, call, the decision of the Minister Flanagan to have a uh, public inquiry into uh, the mother and baby homes. And um, it was a, that was a dark period. Everyone says, oh, the good old Ireland of the, the past. And the thing is that we have to make, learn from that and be a, a better country today. We can judge the past, but the real, the real benefit we can give to those mothers and uh, children as well as closure on the issue is to make our present uh, country a better place in that regard. Uh, I do, like my colleague Senator Mullen, welcome the uh, launch by Minister Rory Quinn of Springboard uh, uh, for, for the fourth year and the 6,100 new places. And the vast, the 25 ICT courses included. One of my friends who, who was at a low ebb benefited personally from one of those courses and is now set up again, ready to roll. And in that regard, we must acknowledge with all the, what, what might be bad news, papers love bad news and why not? but uh, that there's a thousand jobs a week being created in this country. I was talking to a builder yesterday in, uh, in Dundalk, and you can't, there's a three-week waiting list for an electrician. You can't get a plumber for love of money, and that's, whereas that's anecdotal, it's, it's, certainly, it's certainly very good news. And finally, Akahili, could I say, that there is a pickup. I went into Saxton yesterday for my lunch with my colleague, former councillor Jim Lennon, 
and he got the last roast, roast beef dinner on the menu. I had to make do, well, it was very lovely, with a hamburger. We're not discussing menus but, now but, on but, the other business. There, there's a big pick-up now. Uh, 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 there, it's so, have you a question for the leader? Shoots. Yes, I have indeed. I have a question for the leader. I do agree, leader, that uh, about Springboard. And I would like the, the minister to come in here and outline all the good initiatives that are happening in the jobs front so that we can get a bit of good news into the news. Way over time. I'd like to welcome Councillor Ian McGarvey to the Visitors Gallery. You're very welcome. Uh, Senator Power. Thank you, Gerlach. Um I too would like to welcome the announcement of a Commission of Investigation into the mother and baby homes and the assurance that it will have full statutory powers. Um, I understand that the cross-departmental group will report to government by the 30th of June and will be advising on the terms of reference. I too would like to join other senators in requesting that we would have an early debate um, this week ahead of that work so that as members of the House, as members of the Oireachtas, we can feed into that process and make suggestions in relation to the terms of reference of the investigation. Um, I think it's essential that it have a broad remit, um, that it consider all of the issues involved, including the conditions in the homes, the mortality rates, the issues of forced adoption, illegal adoption, the vaccine trials, medical research, um, and that indeed that it have uh, powers of compatibility. I um, also think it's essential that the government act now to seize and centralise all records in relation to adoption, including illegal adoption, and make them available to families. Um, many people have sought to go and uh, find out about their birth parents or indeed mothers have gone to try and find their children um, who were lost to illegal adoption only to find themselves completely abandoned by the state who has shirked all responsibility for this, said that it's a private matter that has nothing to do with them and yet all over this country there are records um, in state offices of passports that were issued to facilitate adoptions to other countries. There's records in GP offices, there was a nurse's file found 10 years ago with the names of a thousand babies and their original birth names and their birth mother's names and the adoptive families that they have been given to. Um, I think it's incumbent if the government is serious about this issue that they would act to centralise all those files to seize, particularly the illegal adoption files, but also all the adoption files that are held um, on the records of agencies around this country. Um, as the movie Philomena depicts, and it's not an uncommon experience, many of those agencies have gone out of their way to be deliberately evasive when people have looked for information. They haven't provided those records. I don't think they can be trusted um, to do so. I think that the state should seize all of that information the HSC has some of it in respect of agencies that have closed, but not in respect of the others, and it should, it should seize all of it. And I also think it's, it's long past time that we acted to give proper rights to adoptive people in this country. I was fortunate to find my mother after 28 years, um, but I'm one of a very small minority of people that were matched to the Adoption Preference Register. People like me in almost every other country in Europe have an automatic entitlement to their birth cert at the age of 18, and Irish people should have that right too. And if we're serious with this issue and providing um, justice for people, it's not just about the past. This is the daily experience of thousands of mothers and babies in this country who were separated uh, and just want to find each other and deserve support from their state. And finally, I just want a second motion um, from Senator Mac Sherry for the Minister for Health to come into the House for a debate in the medical cards. I too have been contacted by dozens of people who are confused about where they stand now in the midst of all these different announcements and I think it's important that we will get clarity in this House. Thank you. Michael Darcy. Well, sure, look, uh, I'd like to uh, support Senator Power's uh, view in relation to births that's been made available. I think it would be very helpful for a lot of children around the country. I would also like to support the call for a conversation, a debate in relation to employment in, in the Shannon here today. Uh, and uh, we need to do a full analysis on where people are employed and I know there's a massive drive uh, in particular for Cork, Galway, Limerick and, and in Dublin for a lot of the foreign direct investment jobs but I think we need to shine a spotlight on those foreign direct investment jobs uh, while we have a lot of conversation about uh, the South East being left out. There are areas within regions who are left out and I just want to uh, uh, give some information and some statistics about my own county, Wexford, in relation to this debate, that Wexford has in the region of 26% unemployment, that's equivalent to Donegal and the North Midlands. In relation to foreign direct investment jobs, there, the last uh, year that we had full data was 2011. There are only 12 IDA companies in County Wexford employing 2,060 people. 
out of 146,000 people. 1.4% of the people who are directly involved with IDA are employed in County Wexford, one of the largest counties in the country. Uh, in 2011, there were uh, 51 jobs created by the IDA companies, in 2012, 111. That's less than 3.4% of the workforce in County Wexford. And I've always said that I don't want something belonging to somebody else, but I do think that there are counties who are being hard done by in relation to their, their fair share of the cake. Uh, those are very small statistics in the scheme of things nationally, and uh, I really feel hard done by that that is the case, and there is not enough being done, and there is not sufficient analysis on a county-by-county -county basis, a regional basis, and indeed even a commuter basis, that some areas are being absolutely, absolutely neglected by IDA, by foreign direct investment, and to a lesser extent uh, by Enterprise Ireland. And I think it would be something that we could do in this chamber very well to give that analysis, put it out there so that people can see exactly where the jobs are going. Uh, I feel hard done by. There are people in Wexford who are on the dole who can fill these positions if they're given the opportunity so to ask you for, to the jobs, for the jobs to be made available in our county. Thank you. Mary White. It's my pleasure to support my colleague Senator Fergal Quinn on his uh, uh, introducing the subject of shingles here in the Senate today. Uh, having suffered shingles and still suffering uh, the, re the remains of it over the last year and a half, uh, I concur with, uh, in this, in, uh, with him how serious this illness is that has been under the radar for so long. In the United States, every person over 50 is recommended to get the vaccine against shingles. And for the last two years in the UK, uh, a free vaccine has been introduced for everybody between 70 and 79. So we do need a, a responsibility to the older people in our society that we have a debate and a discussion on this. And uh, it's the vaccine I can now let, I know I can confirm that the vaccine is available now in Ireland, but we are behind the times as in most things we are. So I'd like to thank you very much, Senator Quinn. Also, Look, I would like to, you know that I introduced uh, a bill and was supported in principle by the government on, man, on the abolition of mandatory retirement. And uh, it gives me the opportunity to reaffirm what you have said about uh, Councillor Ian McGarvey in the gallery, who at the age of 84 has just successfully completed as chairman of Donegal County Council at 84 years of age and also to welcome his wife of 82 no, years of age, Miss Marjorie uh, Mackel. So my pleasure to... We have to promote the whole... It's a very serious issue, Cahir, look, in our society that people at 65 are compulsorily retired in their jobs. And it is my duty to, to draw attention to this. And when there is a person here in the chamber who has been allowed to continue in his work, it is only my responsibility to draw all our attention to it. Senator... Um, could I support the call by uh, Senator Dennis O'Donovan here this afternoon at Cahir League for a debate on the fishing industry? And could I ask that that uh, debate would include the inshore fisheries uh, people, the shell fishing, the oyster and mussel and the lobster uh, industries, um, and that we would discuss the difficulties in first-time licenses and renewal of licenses and the, diff the time it takes to have them re renewed. Many, many families throughout the length and breadth of this island are involved in inshore fisheries industries. And uh, I would like the Minister to indicate his future plans for both European and indeed uh, Far Eastern uh, uh, opportunities uh, for, the, for these industries. In conclusion, a Cahir League, I would hope that the scenes witnessed in the Atlantic Grounds in Armagh last Sunday on our national television will never be, will never be replicated in this country again. To think of the appalling scenes Prior to our national games commencing, I would hope that it will never happen in this country again.
Mm. And that the perpetrators yeah, uh, at Hackley will get their just. Uh, yes, uh, it's not relevant to the other business. Sir Sir Cock to me, it is. Sir Cock. I, I would like to join with you, too, in welcoming that very active councillor in the gallery, Ian McGarvey, and to warmly congratulate him on his re election. He puts many others to shame. Um, I think, talking of green shoots, which my colleague Senator Darcy mentioned, I'd like to recall today, if I may, because it's almost 50 years to the day since the late Dr. James Ryan, as Minister of Finance, reopened that magnificent house, which was closed for 50 years at the time, or not 50 years at the time, but since 32, 33. I'm talking, of course, of Muckers House. And I'd like also to remember uh, the late Deputy Honor Crowley, who was very influential uh, with a local group in assisting in that matter. By way of adjournment, to be well, No, I think that's a wonderful story, and it's very relevant, because some years ago there was a cabinet meeting in that house. I happened to be, happened to be present on that day to facil facilitate matters. Of course, I wasn't present at the cabinet. But I think it might be appropriate in the 50th anniversary year if maybe we could have a meeting of the Shannon there, and it's something you might consider. It's a wonderful story of cooperation between the state and the local group of trustees. The development Bring there of the, the traditional CPP. farms, the garden restaurant, the story of the house itself, the late Billy Vincent and his people, the born Vincents after whom part of the National Park, the 11,000 of that 26, 27,000 acre National Park was called. And we shouldn't forget that. And the people who are associated with it on behalf of the state, I'm talking about Dan Keller when, when I was there, when, when the, he was the manager at the time in 64, and all of the people since Paddy O'Sullivan and Pat Dawson. And I think, Chairman, you could usefully, and uh, my question is more perhaps to you, but also to the leader, to seriously consider, seeing that the House has been used in the past for very auspicious state occasions, maybe in this 50th anniversary year, I would seriously request... So you can take to the CPP. I will certainly do that. I'll, I'll always take your advice, Chairman, as you know. I'll certainly take it to the CPP, but the leader might consider it and use his goodwill also. Senator so Noon. Look, um, there's a lot of discussion about plain packaging again in the media um, in, in the last, well, in the last two days. Um, and I understand that the legislation was brought to Cabinet today and it's to initiate here in the Shannon. And um, the tobacco lobby, as we all know, is a very strong lobby. And I think when the matter was being discussed in the EU, they had practically one lobbyist per two members of, of, of the European Parliament. Such is the money that is expended and the amount that is at stake for the tobacco industry with this new legislation. 78% of current smokers started smoking before the age of 18. And the market